big hall. I was expecting a round table, eight participants talking about containers, but uh, we'll do it this way. Uh, Johan, Johan. Yeah. if you feel more comfortable uh, down on the floor so you can uh, diminish the distance yeah. to your audience, well, feel we're, free. We're so many anyway, so we'll, uh, let's do it like this. I okay, it's, uh, good. Easiest. Yeah. Uh, so, I uh, wonder who cares is. That's you. Uh, yeah. So, uh, very briefly, we're going to talk about uh, containers used in psychologistics. Uh, today, we have a few different uh, subtopics. We have uh, one hour, 25 minutes, now a little less because we're already late, I think 50 minutes. Uh, many subtopics, and we're going to keep each quite, I'm going to buy quite hard, so I'm going to cut at every, so we get to do all the subtopic, subtopics. And uh, containers could be one way to uh, get more bikes moving goods in cities. It could be. I'm not saying it, it, it will, but it, uh, there is some interest in that. So first out, uh, we will get some background from uh, Kies as soon as I get my computer to wake up again. Well, it gives time for me to introduce myself, uh, Kees Serwij. I'm partner at Berg Consultants International, and uh, yes, I'm doing a lot of logistics network optimization in freight transport, national and international. And um, yeah, we advise companies on how to, to to implement their distribution network and how to 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 make it sustainable, but also how to make it cost effective. And we work for retailers, we work for manufacturers, and we work for logistics service providers. And um, yes, we also do a lot of uh, sea and air container transport uh, that's included in a business. But first, um, I'm not a specialist in cargo bike transport, although I'm living in Utrecht, uh, one of the medieval cities in the Netherlands. I live in the city center. And um, myself, I, uh, every Saturday I go by bike to do my shopping. I have a bike with the, the cargo racks and um, I see uh, in Utrecht that more and more bikes have these cargo racks and more and more people are using the bike to do their shopping. Also because Utrecht, as you probably know, is a city which is uh, very hard to, uh, to, 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 to use the car for transport. And also uh, I'm an avid user of uh, delivery services like uh, Foodora and Delivero who is, are springing up the last few months. And they deliver uh, by bike um, products from local restaurants. And uh, uh, well, it gives enough choice for me. And uh, I think it's a, a very good solution if you're home uh, late in the evening uh, to have uh, 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 food from the local restaurant distributed. So in this, in this way, I have some experience with, uh, with cargo bike transport. And uh, I see it, uh, I think it's, it's good that, that uh, companies are using the bike more, more and more than, um, let's say, uh, the car for delivering goods. But well, as I said, I'm not an expert. Um, I'm an expert in this container transport. Please, the following slide. Um, well, container transport. Uh, maybe you think that's something we have uh, since the 1970s. You see on the on the right uh, above corner, you see Sealand. Sealand was the first. Uh, maritime company using containers in the 70s and uh, they started with a few container ships and, and, uh, and using containers. Um, it is not the first part you use containers. You see on the left side you see um, that containers were already, already used in uh, UK rail transport in 1928. Uh, but um, sea containers, well we know that all and we know also the big ships. The ships are getting bigger and bigger. Uh, we see now container ships of 20,000 uh, containers uh, traveling the oceans. And, um, well, the ships get bigger because uh, uh, to bring products, uh, it makes it more and more cheap. Uh, as you probably know, uh, we have wines from Australia and Chile in, into our supermarkets. And that's, uh, um, that's because the transport by the ocean only takes one to two euro cents from Chile or uh, Australia to, to, uh, to Europe. And because it's that cheap, logistics cost is not a big issue and they can compete with wines from France, Italy, Spain and, and Germany here in Europe. 
So you see that it has a big impact and also an air uh, transport. We have um, the, uh, the air cargo container, which is used by all companies uh, and which is the standard in the industry. So we, we see this happening. Uh, containers are taking over uh, the world and we see that we have 170 million containers have traveled to seas in the, in the last year. So next slide, please. Um, well, container transport, the, the basis is that you handle the container. You do not handle the goods, but you handle the containers between the different hubs of the supply chain. And you see that the container goes on and off the ship, and then it's transported by train or by car or by, uh, by inland waterway transport in the Netherlands. It's brought to the distribution center. And this is the concept. If, if you handle the container, it is, more, it's a, it is the, the most efficient, the most cheap way to do it in large volumes. Um, and that's why the container is, has been such a success. It's also standardized. So the, the measurements of the box are standardized, but within these standards, within the st standard uh, measurements, you can have all kinds of boxes. You have tank containers, you have high cubes, you have open containers, you have reefer containers to, to keep the, the, the goods fresh. So you have all kinds, but within the standards. And we see that containers are only used uh, for the, the transport between the producers, sometimes at the other end of the world, to the distribution centers here in Europe, or vice versa. But for the, the last leg from the distribution center to the client, containers are not used. So, why are we using containers? Well, it has certain advantages, which are to the left, but it also has certain drawbacks, which are to the right. And of these advantages, I think the middle two are the most important. When you have containers and you have large volumes, uh, you have lower cost, because you can handle it with standard equipment and this is uh, very cost effective. You can also automate the process. And also you have velocity. Uh, uh, it can be done very quickly, and especially when you have large volumes, you, you need speed. Also, we have standardization and flexibility. You can put everything into the container. And you can uh, do easy warehousing. And because it's in a container, the goods are secure and safe. So these are the advantages. And well, they also fuel the growth for container transport. But it also has drawbacks. Uh, because you have to invest in, in the container handling equipment. And you have to invest. And you need to have volumes in order to, to do this investment. Also, you have site constraints, because if you handle containers, you need some space, also in the city warehouse. So we have to see if this is uh, possible uh, for uh, cargo bike transport. You have the stacking and repositioning of the container. The container also has to go back, and sometimes you need to, to store the container for a few hours. And you also have the possibility of theft and losses, because the container is, can be, is loose from the, from the, from the vehicle, and then it can be lost or it can even be stolen. Now you have some illicit trade, but this is mostly in international transport. So using containers, also in cargo bike transport, has advantages, which are interesting, but also disadvantages. Well, you have uh, several types of uh, uh, cargo bike transport companies. Uh, you have companies like Bubble Post, of course, they're, uh, they're here, so they can best explain about their own uh, company. They have uh, set up operations also in the city where I live in Utrecht. And you see the warehouse, um, they, they, uh, it's non-containerized, so um, it's the possibility to be containerized in the future, but you see that uh, most of the activities are by hand. And that can be okay, uh, but you also have another possibility, and that is that you have containers, which DHL is an uh, example. They started with the cube recycle concept in uh, Almere, a city in the Netherlands, uh, in the last year. And you see on the right, it's also, of course, standing here um, uh, in, the, in the Congress area, that they are using a container and they can put it um, uh, from, uh, from one vehicle to another, from the car to the, to the bike. And well, that's the concept that you, uh, you have a container and you have it in a larger distribution center, uh, and then you, you, you use that container as the basis, and then you, uh, uh, you have the, the, the cargo bike as an element in the total distribution <coughs> process. And for some goods, 
especially goods are nationally um, ordered and nationally distributed on a, on a large scale, this can be um, this, this can be an interesting concept because you can uh, keep costs down when you have large enough volumes. Last slide. So this is my last slide. Um, you can use uh, containers in, uh, in cargo bike transport, uh, but it's only for specific markets. It's for markets which uh, have large volumes, which are nationally organized, and in which the cargo bike is, let's say, the end, um, the end segment of a larger distribution network. And uh, you see at DHL, they, they, have, uh, they have several cargo bikes, non-containerized and containerized, and well, if you use containers, that can be, give uh, major benefits to the to the logistics service provider. Uh, if you control a DC to uh, consumer uh, chain, uh, you can use containers and keep the cost low. Also, you have less handlings or automatic handlings in the in, uh, in the city warehouse. Which, if the volumes go up, it could be um, it could be more efficient and cheaper. And you have automatic handling system, uh, which well, which makes the handling also quicker. Also, it has drawbacks because if you, for instance, do uh, locally sourced goods or restaurant transport, why would you use a container? Um, and uh, well, many of the, the city cargo transport uh, uh, at the moment is locally sourced, and you see an, um, also a trend, an increase in locally sourced goods. So um, I think that um, both systems can uh, work next to each other. It's well uh, going into a certain kind of market. And I'm interested in uh, your ideas about um, uh, where you think that containers can be used in, uh, in city uh, uh, cargo bike transport or where not. So thank you for your attention. Thank you, Chris. Very, uh, very nice to get the container into this uh, context. We have a planned few minutes for discussion, which I guess will be questions for Tess to answer. Yes. So go ahead. Thanks. Uh, thanks for your talk. Uh, the only thing for watching this is, have you considered the weight of the container? Because if it's going to go down to a bullet and it's pedal, it's going to be a problem up a hill. That's true. Uh, payload could be a problem in, um, in cities with much elevation. Uh, well, here in the Netherlands, uh, we don't have much elevation, so I don't think it's a big issue. But um, I think um, uh, that technology can solve that for, uh, to a large extent. If you look at the DHL uh, uh, wheel of uh, cargo, uh, cargo bicycle, you can see that it's, um, it, that it's, uh, uh, that it's designed to, to take on uh, elevations. But, how large these elevations are? Well, you won't have to ask you because may maybe you know more about it. Uh. Yeah, uh, the question was was uh, the weight of the container itself? Was it? Or yeah, what? The time is funny. So if you've got a guy pedaling and he has to cover here, he may take it off. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's the same with uh, that's that's the way it is with cycle logistics. You, you use it where it's competitive. So a guy in a warehouse is going to weigh that box. So the cyclist knows what he's taking on? Yeah, you need to have some kind of weight control, uh, probably also for the, for the uh, yeah, for, both for speed and, and for the technical limit of the, of the, of the vehicle. Yeah. Any more questions? Yes. Don't, don't you think that it's a big disadvantage for the for the car or con container, the one who put things into the container and then goes to another person, it's not a big disadvantage for the delivery man to make this delivery if, if he didn't put the, the boxes into the inside the container. He doesn't know the order or I mean, I don't know. We see it as a big disadvantage. Okay, well, I think that um, uh, you need to give the delivery men or women uh, information about which orders are in the box and uh, how to, to get them out and, and deliver them. So uh, you see that uh, in this system, uh, often information is given by an electronic device about what is in the container and where it's delivered. And I think that's an essential part. Uh, 
that is also used for other kinds of transport, that you have electronic information about what is in the box and how to deliver it. Yeah, if, if that was the question, I uh, absolutely second that. Uh, you need to follow, follow it up with a good uh, IT support system. The, the point is to save time. You get the container with the parcels in, you, you shouldn't have to open it and see what, what did I get today. You get it in, the, you get it in your terminal and just go. That's, uh, that's the point. Probably you can even have it on your smartphone as a kind of app. I can imagine that companies will uh, develop that. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Perfect timekeeping, Kess. Wonderful. Thank you. Uh, so, uh, short subtopic about uh, if we just look at the container and, and compare it to other ways of, of uh, handling cargo in a cargo bike. Uh, cargo bike. What are the major differences? The, the obvious ones. Just wanted to, to uh, have a slide on that. So if we compare with uh, the pallet, uh, the roller cage, or even the, I didn't put it in, but uh, you often use sacks also to, as, a, as a unit for, for parcels. If we compare the container to these, then, then um, what you get with the container is that you have increased control because it's a, it's a locked box. If, uh, if you have uh, safety in it with a the lock, then uh, when it leaves the terminal, and until it goes to the final use, the courier probably, you, it's, nothing happens with it. You have more control. Um, get weather protection uh, if you have a good box, a good container. You have uh, some theft protection, at least if you compare it to open, uh, the other op open uh, options. You could develop a stacking uh, possibility, uh, which is hard with the other other options, to better make use of, of uh, the insides of a, of a truck, for example. If you stack two containers onto each other, you use the, the volume. Good. And of course, also, you can do this very fast uh, shifting. You don't have to do any, any re reloading. Of, uh, of the parcels, even if it's say if it's on a, on a, you could argue that you could use a, a pallet and you would just put put the pallet on. But then on a pallet, it's harder to have a, everything pre-sorted and organized for, for final delivery. It will be so it, it will stick on on the pallet. But in the container, you can have different compartments and have pre-sorted for really fast uh, fast delivery. Yeah, that's the. That's the main differences I see. Uh, so we have a few minutes uh, discussions on that. If you agree, or uh, if you have any, any, uh, any, uh, if you don't agree, or uh, any, any addendums to that. Uh, is there anyone handling a microphone? Uh, I see some hands in the air. Maybe, you, maybe you can go to the microphone even, if you want some exercise. Yeah, just a short question. Um, uh, what was your priority? Uh, you, you named uh, stacking as one possibility for the future, maybe. Um, I, my my uh, thought was um, if it has to be lightweight, or uh, if possible, lightweight, and has to be stackable, what was your priority uh, when you yeah. constructed this container? Right, right now it's, uh, it's lightweight, and also uh, we have never had in mind to stack it the way you do with C containers, you know, like I don't know how, how high they they do them, but it's uh, if we're going to do if we're going to do stacking, uh, it's it's going to be too high to put one container on top of another. Uh, but uh, there could be other ideas on that. But uh, that, that's what we're thinking about. But uh, no way is uh, of course important. Here. Was there a, um, a certain? Um, um, uh, did the uh, uh, logistics company um, advise you to uh, to to uh, um, to uh, give this uh, container stacking possibilities, or was it your own uh, like point of? Uh, um, yeah, uh, 
little bit mix of uh, mix of uh, both. I mean, we see that if you're going to use a, a truck and we have one meter high containers, it's not it, it will not be an efficient use of the volume in, in the truck. So it's something that we have thought about from the beginning that we should have the possibility to, to stack it if we see that it is going to be used in in lorries uh, around the vehicles and the lands. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. Good questions. I saw another hand earlier. Yeah, and you again. <laughs> I want to take it over. Okay, so I come from I come from a nation of oil abolics. So we're fighting a big battle there to get people up to onto pedal, right? So but there you have a beautiful machine demonstrated at the top there. But you see the kind of cargo that may be required to be moved. Now I can see, I'm, I'm coming from a background of time is money. You know, the most important thing yeah. I have is time. I can see there are problems that if the guy loading the, uh, the containers doesn't understand, they may not distribute weight for the, the rider's uh, benefit. So if you're on two wheels particularly, okay, not a problem with that one. But if you're two wheels, the way the weight's distributed can uh, be, be a problem. So it's just yeah. another thing. Yeah, yeah, of course. You, you need to consider that uh, with containers as you need to consider it with any other uh, cargo bike cycle logistics uh, application. Yeah, yeah. Okay, go on. Yeah, another, another one. Lots of exercise this time. Yeah, you have to wait. You, you're a second. Standing, I'm not sure if I understand why you compare the boxes to pallets. I mean, to me it seems like the boxes are somehow end-user delivery, and pallets are mostly used to deliver to businesses, right, or to shops. Isn't it more like it's a different kind of um, delivery that you are doing with either of the two? Yeah, but uh, uh, yeah, I, I, I had no. Uh, uh, the plan was not to uh, do a full plan uh, schedule of where you use which. I just make a basic technical, what, what are the, the different characteristics of this. And especially after the discussion in the Pecha Kucha session this morning, uh, where the uh, pallet was, was uh, suggested to be, yeah, to be the basis for cycle logistics, uh, I think it's, it's interesting to see what are the differences if you would manage a, a pallet and manage a container, but there are differences and we need to know about it if we are going to make a decision if we are going to use container or, or just uh, pallets. They have their uses. Sometimes uh, I guess the pallet is uh, the better choice and sometimes uh, maybe the container could be an interesting option. Yeah, and now we have one there. Uh, I would be interested if you see a containerization within a container, a smaller module like a kitting system. I mean, you, you have all these advantages, uh, but what kind of application could it be if you deliver, let's say, a box in a box, like a Lego system? Like we, yeah, we uh, on the container we have developed now, it's, it has EU pallet uh, dimensions inside, and that's not because we want to put the EU pallet inside, because but quarter pallets, so the 60 by 40 centimeter uh, trays, which uh, a lot of city logistics is handled with, uh, but uh, you suggested some other uh, quick system? No, I think the idea would be like this uh, uh, Russian babushka, you know, yeah. to go to smaller modules, mm -hmm. and I would be interested if, if you have any application on this already, uh, just that you deliver, you drop off a kit, a box, or a drawer, mm -hmm. leave it with the client, and then you have also reverse logistics. Is there any application inside, oh. or is it, are we so far away from this? I haven't seen it yet. It's, uh, I only heard about it in the, in the research project, uh, Modulushka, uh, when I heard about it, but that, uh, yeah, that was a research project. We haven't, I haven't encountered it uh, myself, other than the bread trays. Yeah, one, maybe uh, two more, and then we'll move on to the next uh, topic. At the moment, these containers are only for use on your particular bike. What do you think the options are for a sort of multimodal, you know, yeah. something that would operate on a variety of different yeah. bikes, so mixed fleets, yeah. 
That's a very interesting uh, question. I will come into that uh, in the later subtopic, so I'm going to save it, save it for that. Yeah. One more. Yeah. Well, I'm just starting up, so most of my thoughts are theoretical, not so practical yet, but I think a lot about um, last mile delivery and about, I think, and containerization is interesting. And um, also the potential of um, distributing from internet sales. And it seems to me that that should, you know, should be some, they should, um, I can't think of the English word. Hold it. They, they um, should be associated with each other. Yeah, yeah um, and also, uh, yeah. I also think that when we come to that also in another uh, uh, subtopic, okay. but I also think that containers could be a way for, for psychologists to, to really come and, and have a piece of the cake of the e commerce uh, uh, yeah. logistics. Yeah. But it's important that uh, they develop a system that's standard, not just useful on your bikes, no, but more no, standard. Yeah. We're coming to that. Right yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay, so let's uh, let move on. Uh, I'm going to find out which uh, topic is next. Yeah, so it's, it's already been uh, mentioned uh, what has been done so far. Uh, topic now is uh, what, what have been done to date with the containers and uh, there might be more examples but uh, the only one I can mention today is well the, the one where, where I'm involved myself. Uh, just a couple of words of, of how, uh, what the application is uh, in this case where we're using uh, container uh, together with uh, DHL Express. So uh, they have their sorting uh, terminals. Uh, well in this particular case it's 25 kilometers away from a city, city center where they usually uh, distribute parcels. Uh, that's too, too long distance for a cargo bike. Uh, wouldn't be uh, economically viable. So what they do is in the sorting terminal where they fill all their uh, vehicles they also uh, fill one of the containers. Uh, the containers goes into a van which also have uh, yeah, parcels on, on shelves. The van goes into the city center where the container is switched over to a, a cargo bike in, by one man in less than a minute. So the bike does the distribution in the city center where it is more efficient and has other advantages. And the van continues because it's still loaded with other parcels in the exterior uh, areas uh, of the city. So we get the best combination of, of uh, vehicles. Uh, and maybe to, to say uh, against the case, maybe a little bit, uh, this requires a minimum of, of infrastructure uh, investment. We are containerizing, but the only infrastructure here is a couple of ramps. That's more or less it which is a uh, folded uh, sheet metal so uh, that that's really yeah it's not a, it's not a high infrastructure investment when you do it like this of course you can develop it and make specialized system special vehicles for for uh, carrying the containers so. but uh, as the containers are smaller and lower weight than the sea containers and the uh, air containers you can handle them more manually so uh, with which yeah when you do it at this scale, it's a very small infrastructure investment. Uh, and the other example uh, is uh, from a customer of uh, Radkutsche, uh, where they have a box that you can take uh, off at least from the Radkutsche Mosquitier, place it outside the flower shop early in the morning, and then they come and uh, pick up a loaded, preloaded uh, container with flowers. You just snap it on and go. So no need to, to stand there and wait for, for the bike being loaded with, uh, with flowers. 
Just go there, snap it on, and go. And that's also saying against UKS again, <laughs> because that's yeah, lo local delivery where you can have the advantage of, of uh, uh, pre, what did I call it? Um, Pre-packing. Yeah. So you uh, you you will save the time that the courier needs to stand and wait uh, for for the vehicle being loaded. Uh, so it's good that that uh, can be out and delivered. She can be out and delivered, and the next box can be uh, filled at the same time. That's the two examples I know. Uh, do we have anything more to uh, to fill in? Maybe from from a busy bike, uh, you had you do have a container system. Yeah, hands up there. Yeah. Can we get it right? This is a, I respect this, what you said, but this is a quad. Yeah, sorry. A quad. Yeah. Quad Not a bike. Yeah. A oh. bike is a different kettle of fish to yeah. a quad. Yeah. And a trike. Yeah. Two, three, four. Yeah. 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 Yeah, sure. I'll call it the quadricycle or quad. What do you say, Viva? Do you have anything to say about your? Are they used uh, the container system you developed? Or the prototype? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Another hand up there. Yeah. Are there any uh, uh, communications between uh, the, the um, authorities that are making uh, decisions, planning decisions about sizes and dimensions? Um, because I, I know there are certain, at least in Holland, I think 80 centimeters wide is like the regulation, for example. Mm. Is there any coordination there between people here that are like developing these solutions and the, the you know the, the rule make, the rule makers? You know, Politics or uh, infrastructure, uh, official infrastructure. Yeah, that's a, that's a standardization uh, question, which is very interesting, I think, because uh, we will, the, the last topic will be connected to like the municipalities, what they can do to support uh, uh, the use of, of containers in yeah, in the city logistics. Has this this has this uh, detail been taken? No, the, the the only thing I know I have. I have I have booked a meeting with my local uh, municipality to discuss uh, develop further development of, of uh, terminals yeah. which the city operates. Uh, what I was kind of getting was more the sizing, the dimensioning. Like if, oh. if like 80 centimeters is, seems to be the right size, then it would probably be a good idea. I would think that parties get together, you know, in an uncompetitive yeah. fashion to discuss yeah. this dimensionality. Yeah, we have uh, yeah. one of the topics that comes will be the standard, uh, for example, with dimensions. So yeah. we're yeah. getting there. Yeah. So this is uh, discussed on a broad platform. Kind of. we, we are now starting the discussion amongst the uh, cargo bike uh, okay. manufacturers. Oh, sorry, so it's, it's getting a bit too far again. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, now I don't know if I'm keeping the time yet, but I think we should uh, move on. Okay, yeah. <coughs> yeah, I should just mention this. Well, we, we've been running this pilot for a year with uh, DHL. And uh, compared to the, the, the smaller cargo bike and the container system, uh, yeah, more parcels were delivered. Per, oh. Per hour, and uh, yeah, uh, at least a few of the couriers said that uh, yeah, they felt better after they working uh, on this bike. But that uh, hasn't really to do with, with uh, the container. No, that's more the bike bike related. Really. Well, we're actually in for the break. <laughs> Uh, shall we make it a little bit, as we're behind the time, shall we make it a short break just uh, to stretch your legs? Five minutes, and we start again, yeah?